Hey everyone, this is Zephyr, and welcome to the Bailiwiki channel, where we teach everyday GMs to combine technology and art to create truly amazing experiences for their players. We also create scenes and modular systems that you can use without any setup. If you're a GM who likes to wow their players and you're using platforms like Foundry VTT and Dungeon Draft, then you're in the right place. Subscribe to our channel to keep up with all of our latest content, and consider becoming a patron. Not only do you support the channel, but you'll also gain access to every scene and modular system that we've ever made. Today, we're back automating Foundry with a follow-up to the Dynamic Scenes video that we did a few episodes ago. This time, we're diving into this beautiful, magnificent, and modular mansion that was just added to the Bailiwiki Premium Module. It's a reimagining of our original mansion that had three different motifs, alternate rooms, and three different terrains. Using Monk's Active Tau Triggers and Tagger, I was able to create all of these extra switches to be able to flip between different motifs and themes for rooms, floors, and the entire mansion. This is a more advanced version of the dynamic switching that we did in part eight of Automating Foundry with the Manor Inn. And I'm gonna dive into the first part of this as this will probably have to be a multi-part series discussing the different elements and aspects that go into making such a complex and dynamic scene as this. You can see as I'm clicking around, I have things that are controlling entire floors and individual rooms, allowing me to swap this ground floor into a furnished mode with green lights indicating what motifs are active in each individual room we have level specific labels so that we know what rooms are a part of each floor of the mansion and we can keep things organized that way. So today we're gonna to dive into the basics and the glue of what makes these indicators work and some of the features of combining Tagger. As always, check the description for timestamps and let's get started. First, a quick introduction to how all of this works. I have all of these individual controls for these tiles. And I'm going to open up both my furnished and unfurnished controls for the upstairs tower room. We'll see here in the taggers, I have a mansion 2B control on both of these. I've designated the tower as room 2B, and then we can see that these have a furnished and unfurnished modifier respectively for a mansion 2 tag and a mansion master tag. So that designates them as a floor 2 control and a master control or a part of the mansion within their respective themes. And this is how we use those floor-wide and mansion-wide controls to be able to flip things all into this sleepy, unfurnished version, as well as the ruined and furnished versions. So we're combining multiple tags to give us more robust control and have larger transformative features in our controls. So let's dive into the triggers themselves. This is your standard GM-only on-click tile I have the hover over pointer enabled because I think it's really intuitive and convenient for users to be able to hover over the tile and see the pointer come up. And then going into the actions, I have a lot of anchors here. These anchors aren't used for any particular logic within the tile trigger itself. They're there more for organization. There's a lot of different moving pieces. And so making sure that you're actually turning everything on that you need to and turning everything off that you need to for an individual room is really important. So I have them broken down into different sections, such as art, lights, sounds, walls, and setting and clearing the control anchors. To start, I have this altar where I'm going to be changing everything that's tagged with the Mansion 2B control, which is everything for this room, and it's that whole panel of tiles up there. I'm going to change the tint to white, which is kind of my off state indicator. Next, I play a sound file that is going to let the user know that, okay, you did in fact click on this, it's just now loading. So it's a good way to give some feedback to your user or yourself if you're constructing this for yourself. Next, we're gonna alter the specific tile here. Here we're altering Mansion 2B and giving it a new art value. And we're gonna show and hide the appropriate lights. We have the base light and we'll also see that there is a sparring light and that is for one of the specific alternates. If we had sounds, we would also be enabling and disabling them here. And same thing with walls. We've only got one set of walls and the only thing that needs to change with them is their movement. And that's going to 20, so therefore normal movement restriction. 
we have another tool that will turn it to zero and completely unobstruct the movement there later. But we can see we have these different tags here and these different settings so that we can swap between entire themes without just flipping the artwork, but actually making it feel like that artwork has an impact on how the scene is navigated. Finally, we wait a second to make sure that when we toggle the control's initial color to white, we wait before we set this particular tile to green. Otherwise, it might run at the same time and you might not have the tile color actually switch over properly. So switching over to my token control, I can click on these and swap them around. And we can see right here, this is the base wall for the Mansion 2B area. And we'll see that it now obstructs movement. Since it's a desk, we don't have it obstructing anything else. And when we go into the unfurnished version, we'll see that this now no longer obstructs movement. So it's allowing free reign where we are not seeing a desk in the artwork. We can then activate any of these other alternates, such as that sparring option, and we can see that sparring light is in, and we can swap between all sorts of different motifs. If you have your Levels UI pulled up, you can just disable the overhead tiles, and then you can select any of these tiles and take a look at them in the flesh and edit them right within that particular level. It's really helpful when you are doing the setup and makes it a little more intuitive when you're trying to interact with these tiles without overhead turned on. Over here, we can see the whole upstairs level controls. And if we go into the triggers, since this is a pretty large change, we're gonna go ahead and have a show dialog requesting a confirmation and explain to them that it's going to reset all of their alternates. So if you individually switch over a room, such as the sparring area or this wizard's bedroom, it's gonna reset that, even if you're switching to say furnished, so we want to make sure that people understand what they're getting into there, or a reminder for ourselves when we are opening that. Next, I am going to be triggering all of the Mansion 2 damaged controls. So that's this entire column here with the ruined symbol there, has the same tag for Mansion 2 damaged. So that's how we're going to activate all of them and trigger them. Then they're gonna go through their normal steps and reset all of the colors and do all of the light and sound and wall enabling and disabling that they need to do. And we can demonstrate this by clicking on it and selecting the confirmation. And then it's gonna start cascading that confirmation color as we go through. And when all of them are green, we can see the entire upstairs has switched over to this ruined variant. You can see an extension of this process with the entire mansion option. Here, rather than using that mansion two whatever motif control, we're using the mansion master motif control. And this is where we're flipping either all of the damaged across every floor or all of the furnished, etc. The reason why we don't have three separate triggers, just one for each floor there, is because Monk's active tile triggers, when you go to trigger a large batch of tiles like that, it will stop after triggering that one set. So we can't just keep layering that. There might be a feature that gets added in later, but as of right now, once you trigger that big batch of tiles, it's going to actually stop the actions for this current batch of tiles. So you don't want to rely on being able to trigger multiple groups of tag tiles with the same uh, initial trigger. And to demonstrate this, we again get that confirmation and we'll see slowly after everything has flipped over as each room and each control finishes its process, then we're gonna see that green highlighting over that particular option. Now let's take a look at a more advanced example here. And this is with a specific room that's getting altered. And this is easily the most complex of the rooms. This is the basement hidden room area. And if I flip on this portal room here, we'll see that there's a bunch of lights that turn on and some of the vision changes. So walls are changing as well. And we have a whole new layout, not just different artwork. If we flip on the lights, you can see that there are a lot that are currently disabled. And same thing with the walls. So this is where we're really leveraging those multiple tags. When we pop open this tile for the portal room, we'll notice that it has that Mansion 0B control. So once again, everything for that one room is designated as that room's control. So that's how we're turning all of them into white, including the alternates. Opening up the triggers themselves, you'll see that this one is particularly large. So we have a lot of things going on here. Uh, for example, we still have that classic clear controls and setting the art. 
Then I used a anchor for base walls and alternate walls. So the base walls are what we're clearing out here, right? And then alternate walls is what we're actually trying to get to at the end. And I have them separated because I found that with Monk's Active Tau Triggers, if you're altering a wall, you need to alter something else before you come back to altering that same wall again. Otherwise, you might not actually make those changes. So that's why we have the lights and sounds and fireplaces in between the alternate walls. And fireplaces I use as kind of a loose designation for a tag that applies to both lights and sounds. So looking at this, you'll see that we're turning portal walls into things that are basically normal walls. And some of these wall sections are going to overlap between multiple groups. This particular wall we'll see is both a base wall, a portal wall, and a dungeon wall. So it is used for all of these, but at different times it might need to be disabled. And here we just have a portal wall, and then we have other sections that are both dungeon walls and base walls, but not portal walls, etc. So in order to have the proper changes go through, we need to make sure that we effectively disable all of the walls to this particular room, and then re-enable the ones that we need for this configuration. And that's what this lower section is for. Nesting in these additional triggers is how we can get really robust configurations without having to make three walls in the exact same position. Instead, we can do one wall with three different tags, which is a little bit more performant and just takes slightly longer for this monk's active tau trigger to fire off. We can see this application not just on the walls, but also on the lights and the sounds. So with the lights, some of these also have overlap, just like the walls. And we'll see that if I open up these disabled lights, one of these is both the wizard light and the dungeon light. So it's a part of two different sets of lights that we're going to bring on. And once again, we're cutting down on the total amount of entities that we need to have in a scene. And we can create really robust scenes that way. It also allows you to reuse some of these lights instead of having to duplicate that work over and over and over again. So it's really key to reducing your own workload. To give you a visual demonstration of exactly how these alternate uh, pieces go, I'm going to turn on DF Architect's ability to see walls across different uh, tool sets. And we're going to have a nice visual demonstration of how these walls will effectively disappear. You see turning into ethereal and then invisible walls that then no longer obstruct movement. And then load in and we can see that those base walls come back in and are re-enabled to obstruct everything you expect a normal wall to obstruct. And again, we get that nice effect as we go through and see things changing over properly. So it's a really cool way to double check your work using DF Architect here, just to be able to see visually what's flipping and when and how to make sure that everything is flipping over correctly. Another nice feature is that since these don't obstruct the actual tile work and they don't have any light or vision restriction, we'll actually see where those walls aren't affecting the artwork. So it's kind of nice to have an extra visual representation of where those walls are showing up when you have this toggle visibility on multiple tools turned on. And you can see as we move around that this has been completely reconfigured and it's a really robust system to allow us to have a lot of configurations for the same trigger and the same room. It's also worth noting here that the tiles for all of these different alternate artworks have been cut to the exact same dimensions in Dungeon Draft, so some have a little more negative space to accommodate the extra artwork in the others. And this is just a really cool way to have, again, that really robust room. Another thing I want to demonstrate is we can get more complicated still here. You'll notice that there is this really faded out little tile here, and this is actually tagged as bath water, and in the triggers, it's not currently active, but it's an on movement tile that's going to play some splish splashes every now and then as we move within the tile. And if I activate this here bath alternate trigger, we'll see that it actually has the command in there to activate that tile. So just to demonstrate, I will pull out my handy dandy test actor and walk through this area where there is water. And even though it's only 60%, we're clearly moving around through the tile enough that we would be able to hear it. So it is definitely not active. When I go ahead and activate the bath, not only am I disabling my walls and my doors and everything here, I have also now activated that water tile 
And as we move around, we will hear some splashes in addition to the new sounds in this dynamic space. So you can nest in additional active tiles. For example, maybe you want to go into that portal room and you want to add teleportation tiles that will actually take you to other scenes or other locations within the mansion, but are only there when you have the portal room active. With this setup, you actually can now. So this is a cool way to add even more functionality to your dynamic and modular scenes. That concludes this introductory part to these advanced dynamic scenes that we're automating here. I hope that this has given you some inspiration on how to further leverage Tagger and Monk's Active Tile Triggers in order to really make your scenes dynamic or control multiple different elements. You're certainly not limited to using these capabilities for just switching over rooms within a mansion or manor. You can also use them for creating dynamic environments in a combat or within a puzzle or trap, etc. In this video, we mainly introduce the concepts that are at play here. In the next part, I'm going to go through how I actually created the secret room in the basement, the most complex room that we went through today, and I'll walk you through some workflow processes that really made it a lot easier for me and a lot faster. And I hope that after that video, you will see that it is not nearly as daunting to build this complex dynamic system as you might think on the initial view. Finally, we're going to go over how to put together all of these multiple triggers to convert the entire house and some of the thought process that goes into designing a modular and dynamic building from the ground up. If you want to take a look at the inner workings of the mansion, it's available right now as a part of the Bailiwiki Premium Maps Pack on our Patreon. So check the link in the description to go grab that. And let me know if you have any questions about how we did this in the comments down below, and let us know what maps you would like to make dynamic. Once again, this has been Zephyr. Thanks so much for watching, happy map making, and have a good one.